there's this idea of how the moon formed that is kind of become canonical at this point, but still people are legitimately questioning it. That's one thing I like about science is that nothing's ever set in stone. But the canonical idea is that there was this Mars-sized object that crashed into the Earth. We normally give it the name Theia. And uh, it's interesting to us where that Mars-sized planet actually came from itself. I mean, there were, the solar system was in the process of forming planets. Turns out when you look at the, you know, you simulate these collisions, you can't have these collisions happen too dramatically too, with too much kinetic energy. Otherwise, you, it's too destructive and you can actually end up destroying both bodies. So you have to have a fairly gentle impact. So one of the ideas is that Theia may have formed in the same orbit of the Earth at one AU from the Sun, but it formed in one of the Trojan points yes. in a horseshoe orbit. So this means it's kind of uh, librating around this horseshoe position and essentially, if it's more than about 10% the mass of the Earth, any object there, its vibrations will kind of compound and build larger and larger. And so eventually, this wobbling got so big that it, it basically grazed and struck the Earth. And that impact was still extremely energetic. It largely vaporized Theia, but it left the the Earth, which would have been larger in the past. It would have been you know, a super-Earth, essentially, at this point. It stripped some of that upper mantle away, that upper mantle then formed the moon, and that's why the moon doesn't really have a significant core. It's primarily just essentially mantle-like material from the Earth. We also know from the Apollo rocks that it has the same oxygen isotope ratio as Earth rocks. That's how we know it really, you know, this used to be a part of the Earth. That's right. Went up to the moon, and now it's come back down <laughs> to where it belongs, back on the Earth. So this impact was... um you know, it has lots of interesting coincidences. Like it has to have this, this Theia type object, has to be just the right mass, has to be a grazing impact, not too hard, and also just the right angle. If you change the angle, you can actually destroy both bodies as well. So a lot of people have tried to simulate these realizations of this impact, but it, it raises the obvious question as to how often does that happen? And that's one of the, that's one of the reasons we want to look for exomings is to hopefully fill out that question. And the presence of a large moon does seem to have some benefits. By that large impact, it's thought, for instance, you may have stripped off a lot of that thick upper lithosphere that was forming on the Earth. And had that not had happened, rather than having like a roughly 10 kilometer crust around the Earth, it could be 100 kilometers crust. And that'd be so thick that you wouldn't be able to have plate tectonics. You would form a stagnant lid, which is what Venus has. And things did not go well for Venus with the staying <laughs> lid. So, you know, you can't have carbon recycling. You can't have the nitrous, like things like this. So you would end losing subduction and the ability of the Earth to recycle materials, which seems kind of crucial for the longevity of a biosphere.